When my boys were young, they always wanted to help me with projects around the house. One of the earliest big projects I engaged them in was a repair and painting of a very long wooden fence. Like most young kids, they had played with paint before and could hardly wait to get the paint onto the fence. Unfortunately, they weren't really prepared for the week-long process of scraping, sanding, filing, and fixing that had to happen before they could get the paint flowing. Going through all the preparation for painting was close to torture for my boys. When they finally got to the painting stage, they were actually disappointed that it went so quick compared to the preparation. As my boys have grown older and engaged in a steady diet of projects, they now know that proper planning and design will make their projects more effective and their final product will be so much better. My younger son, owns an auto customization business, and the many years of experience and life lessons of effective project planning and design have helped him grow his business. He has a very exclusive clientele and works on some of the most desirable vehicles because of the quality of his work. This quality is a direct result of effective design, planning and preparation, combined with the attention to detail in the implementation of that design. Doing this type of preparatory work is so important to instructional design. A well-designed face-to-face course takes a great deal of design and planning. You'll find that you have to be even more purposeful in the design of all the key aspects of an online or blended learning environment. Rather than allow the learning environment to come together as a reactive response to situational factors and the learning dynamics that arise, you will need to proactively create a significant learning environment. This course and the learning opportunity within it will enable you to purposely plan your instruction and design an effective approach to aligning outcomes, activities, and assessment that will lead to the creation of a significant learning environment. An effective design will address the following broad factors. Student-centered versus teacher-led. Teaching roles, from presenter, facilitator, coach, to mentor. Ubiquitous access and social networking. Instructional formats, blended or fully online. Assessment and evaluation. Academic quality and standards. Support and infrastructure. These factors will be realized in a design video and supporting resources that you will create and share that must address the following questions or key points. Please refer to the assignment instructions for full details. What is the subject or level of your instruction and the intended audience? What are the key institutional documents, like a syllabus, outline, accreditation, or governmental standards you will need that will influence your design process? Are you using CompC-based or outcomes-based instruction? Why and how? What design approach have you chosen and why? What are the key design documents you need to create? You'll need to share a fully developed design map or document. We recommend that you use Fink's backward design and the resulting three-column table that you either developed in a previous course or that you develop now. This three-column table will be your design map and the foundation of your design, so make sure you have the key design elements well-developed and fully vetted through your learning community. If you don't have a previous three-column table to utilize, we will help you with this outcome-based backward design process, but warn you that this will add additional time to the design stage of this process. You'll also need to develop and share an implementation outline and timeline as well as linking to supporting documents that will play a role in your design. In an ideal situation, you would want to get synchronous input and feedback on your design. When I am developing courses, I regularly meet with my co-developers and based on their reviews, I will revise my designs. But with busy schedules and the fact that there are so many demands on everyone's time, setting up an asynchronous review process that includes an overview video, some design documents, related materials, is your next best option. Your design video should include a screen capture approach using tools like Screencast-O-Matic or Camtasia, where the key components of your design are shared and fully narrated. The video can be uploaded to YouTube, Vimeo, or other video sharing system, and then posted within your website or blog or other digital collaborative space. Effective design doesn't happen in isolation. 
you will have the opportunity to welcome and build a community of like-minded learners by sharing your design and plans and also by reviewing fellow participants' designs. Please remember that you will be asking your fellow participants to provide feedback or fee forward, so making connections and building a community of learners is a key factor in the effectiveness of your future learning activities. If we start with a student-centered approach and purposely assemble all the key components of effective learning into a detailed design and then turn that design into a significant learning environment, we can then help our students to learn all the time and everywhere.